Church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles and go to the book of Proverbs. And most every scripture we're going to be talking about uh, is going to be out of the book of Proverbs. It's a book of wisdom, and it tells us how to live our lives, and particularly how to train up our children. We're talking about what every Christian should know about the family, and we're right in the midst of the discussion of disciplining our kids and teaching our kids. I want to give you just very quickly some, some good reasons why you need to discipline your kids. And by discipline, I'm not talking about just teaching and correcting verbally, but why you need to spank your kids, why you need to properly discipline those kids when they are in rebellion. Now, in chapter number 19, verse 18, it says this. This is a command, by the way. Chasten your son while there is hope, and do not set your heart on his destruction. If we don't discipline our kids, then we're setting our kids up for failure. That we are to love our kids enough to discipline them and to train them while there's time. That is, while they're young, and we'll talk about that more later. While they're in those primary years, of, from one year old up to about six or seven years old, or those primary years where you must set the bent for their life. If you don't, then they're going to always be rebellious. If you do not drive away the rebellious spirit in them to where they are able to be teachable, where they're able to, to follow instructions, who are able to, to have self-control, where they don't throw fits and they don't hit people and bite people, then you're going to turn them loose on a school system and they're going to always be in trouble. Then there's going to be the police force. They're going to always be in trouble with the police force. Get out in society, they can't keep a job because they can't get along with other people. And so they ought to be trained up. And so we need to do it because God commands us to discipline our kids. Now go over to Proverbs in chapter number 23. Proverbs chapter 23, beginning in verse 13, he says this, Do not withhold corrections from a child. For if you beat him with the rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Well, that sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? You might not want to read that too much uh, in public because people just take the word beat and that's all they can focus on. You said you were supposed to beat our kids? No, he's talking about the rod of reproof. That is, when they would spank someone, what mom and dad used to call a, a switch. They would take a switch or something uh, like a little rod or a paddle, and it would always be across the posterior, across the bottom, and they would spank their kids with those. Now notice here, when he used the word beat, he's talking about severe. He's not talking about just pat them on the bottom with your hand or, or, or just swat them just a little bit. He, he's talking about here a, a severe spanking. Now why a severe spanking? And here's what he says again, do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. That is, you're not trying to bring permanent damage. He's not going to die from a spanking. But you shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. In other words, you are training up that child to be obedient to adults, to be obedient to parents, to be obedient to the teachers at school, to be obedient to the police officers. Many people screaming and hollering about the police officers uh, being forceful or having to shoot someone. Almost every video I've ever watched, if the person would have done what the police officer told them to do rather than argue or run or, or try to fight, they'd have been okay. But we do not raise up our kids and train up our kids to listen and to obey those in authority. And it begins with the authority of the parents. So you're doing your kid a favor you're doing God's will when you train up that kid to be obedient to you. So when you tell them, sit down and don't move, or sit down and don't say a word, they sit down and they don't say a word. Or go to your room and don't you come out until I tell you to. Or get out there in the yard and get those sticks picked up and get them thrown in the trash and rake those leaves. And they get up and they go do what they're told. You are training that kid up, and that is helping them to understand that when they get to school, when they get out in society, when they get a job, they're going to have to do what they are told to do. Now, some societies, and I know Israel is one of these, they have a situation where when kids get out of the nest, that is what we would call today when they leave high school, 
they're required two or three years, I don't remember which it is, I believe it's two, but it may be three, of military service. Every child, boy or girl, they have to go into military service to where if mom and dad hadn't trained them to get up on time every morning, to be at breakfast at the right time, to, to be where they're supposed to be, to follow orders, to have a job that they're trained to do, uh, they all go off the military and they are trained in those 18, 19, 20 year old uh, years. And that just sets up a society where everybody has to do their part and you're not going to have a rebellious spirit that's going to be able to get, get by without being trained. And so that's what helps the society to stay strong. Now, next time we're going to talk about more reasons why we need to discipline our kids, why we need to be sometimes harsh in that discipline, but at the same time, always loving. We do it out of love because we don't want our kids to go to hell. We, if, we, if a child can't obey their parents, what makes you think when it comes of age they're going to be able to obey God? If they can't obey their earthly father and they're rebellious against him, what makes us think they're not going, that they're going to be able to, to obey their heavenly father? They're not. Plus, in their day and time, if a child was rebellious, if a child continued on and mom and dad didn't train him up and he got out in society and he misbehaved and he acted up and he's destroying public property, eventually the people of the city got together and stoned him. That is, they put him to death. They weren't going to let him impact or affect the rest of the kids in the community. That's harsh, but it could have been stopped if mom and dad trained them up. Let us pray. Father, help us to use discipline wisely, not to over-discipline or to, to exasperate our children, as the scripture says, or to drive them away, but help us to do it out of a sense of love and duty and because you commanded us to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.